Have you ever like tripped out thinking about the idea of your own existence? For me, it'll happen at the end of a long day, I'll be washing my face, and I'll look up and I'll accidentally make eye contact with myself in the mirror. And I don't know, humans up close are weird. I'll start spiraling like, oh, what am I? Who am I? I know it sounds kind of weird, but I think those are questions we should all ask ourselves a little more often. And for some reason, when I was a kid, I thought about this a lot. So much so that I was consumed with curiosity and decided I needed to learn more in school so that I can try to find answers to those questions. After arguably too many years in school, now that I'm at the end of my PhD, I finally started to satisfy that childlike curiosity. And the answers have given me a new perspective that I really want to share. All right, so next time you're there in that moment, what am I? You can think that you are 37.2 trillion cells. 37.2 trillion. Now, warning, this is just our best estimate to date. It's subject to change. That would be a good thing. It would mean that science is improving and becoming more accurate. But as far as we know, by our best guess right now, you're 37.2 trillion cells. A trillion has 12 zeros in it. Okay, that's 37 followed by 12 numbers. For comparison, there are only 7.7 .7 billion people on the planet, which is still a lot, but a billion only has nine zeros. That means that there are more microscopic cells in your body, making up your body right now, than there are people on this entire planet. To make this a little more tangible, imagine that where you are on the planet right now is a warm, sunny beach. All right, sun beating down on you, and you reach into the sand and you scoop up a handful of that sand. All right, you with me? Look down at the sand grains in your hand. Try to count them. It's a lot, right? You can't count them. It's a lot. No, it's not. It's only like 400,000 grains. It's a lot more going on in here than all of you. The other thing about sand, since we're roasting sand, why not? The other thing about sand is that they all kind of the grains all look pretty similar, right? They're a little bit different, but they look pretty similar. The cells in your body come in a range of sizes and shapes, some of them illustrated here. The cartoon, it's a cartoon, the colors are just for fun, but you can still get a sense of just how many different types of cells there seem to be in your body. We think there are like hundreds of different cells, but we're discovering new ones every day as we develop more sophisticated and sensitive technology. Now, you don't really need me to tell you this. Intuitively, you already know it. Just look at your body. Right? You have skin, you have hair, you can imagine your muscles, you can feel your pulse and feel the blood rushing through it, you can imagine the heart that's pumping it, your brain, your fat. You're made of all of these beautiful different pieces, all of these cells. When I learned about that in my early cell biology classes, I was like, huh, I'm glad I asked what I am because it's a pretty cool answer. But what usually happens when you find one answer, you develop a new question. And the next one I had was, Hold on a sec. How? How? How am I all of these different cells? How did these all arise? Because the trick here is that all of these cells are related. Now, you thought your family was complicated. Your body is a whole other thing. <laughs> yeah, all of these cells are related. They all came from the same initial fertilized egg, that thing that was made when your parents did the unthinkable. Right? They all came from the same fertilized egg. They all have the same DNA in them. So how do they become so different? took some genetics and molecular biology classes, and what I learned was DNA, it's a lot, okay? There's so much of it. It's like a super long newspaper that nobody's reading cover to cover. So what do we do instead? You might only read the business section, you might only read the funnies, and maybe you read my favorite section, the science section. Just kidding, everyone's favorite section is the comics, right? Okay, so everyone reads their favorite section of the newspaper, and from that, you get a different perspective on the world based on which section you read. Well, your cells are the same way. Each one is only using a subsection of DNA, and so each cell ends up a little bit different. Pretty cool. What that leaves us with is you in all of your glory, trillions of cells inside you making up you. <laughs> each of them has the same, roughly, DNA but they're interpreting that DNA to make different molecules, different proteins, so each cell has a different combination of stuff inside of it. You, a big blob made of smaller blobs with even smaller blobs inside of it. And what you might be thinking, which is reasonable after someone just said blob that many times, is why do we blobbing care? <laughs> right? Well, because all of these things are necessary for your everyday life. Everything that you do, you need all of these blobs in order to do them. Let's do a simple demonstration to really see this in action. 
All right, on the count of three, if you're able to, please clap or feel free to make any other noise that you'd like. Okay, one, two, three. Oh, beautiful, thank you. <laughs> Wonderful, okay, so let's break down, now that we've understood the blobs, let's break down what was really happening in those moments. If you're waiting for the auditory cue to clap, you're using your ear, different structures in your ear, including sensory cells, which are gonna sense that noise, send a message into the part of your brain that senses noise and, and perceives the noise over here on the side, it's the temporal lobe. There's an auditory cortex in there, it's gonna process those noise signals and try to interpret what they mean. It's gonna realize, ah, she gave an instruction for movement, shoot that message up to the frontal lobe, particularly the motor cortex. If you're wearing a headband, it sits about there. And now the neurons, the brain cells in the motor cortex are gonna send a message down super fast, down your spinal cord. You can feel your vertebrae protecting your spinal cord. It's gonna send the message down and out to the level of the arm, and the nerves there are gonna tell your muscle cells to contract, and you're gonna move your arm. All of that happened in the milliseconds between me saying three and you clapping, all of this. And of course, I've oversimplified. There are so many more cells involved I haven't shown here. And I didn't even talk about how to clap. You need to coordinate your two arms and there's a different part of your brain doing that. So instead of this, you do this. Everything we do, all of our movements, but not just that, even the more complex things like thinking, all of those are based on some series of events, some actions by cells in our body which I think is awesome. <laughs> now, I presented it here very formulaic, as if we've solved biology. But no, there are still a lot of mysteries on how all of these things work, right? Turns out 37.2 trillion cells times millions of things in them equals a lot more unanswered questions than when we started. But what's kept me fascinated and grateful that I get to study this and think about biology every day for the past decade is this. These are real cells that I grew in a dish in the lab and imaged through the microscope. I've looked at thousands, okay, thousands of these types of images, but never gotten sick of looking at them because they remind me that all of us are this kind of beautiful, complicated mess. And that's the real lesson in biology. That's the real power of asking biological questions and trying to answer them through the scientific method. The real thing biology teaches us is that each of us is a universe. And now I'm being a little literal here. These are a specialized cell type in the brain called astrocytes. They're named for their star-like shape. And so you literally have star cells and many other types of cells in your body. You're a universe. So the most important thing of biology is that we don't forget about this beauty in our biology. Forget the numbers I told you, the fun facts. None of that matters as much as the realization that you are a universe. Now, not only is that a fun thing to say and a cool thing to think about, I think it can also teach us an important lesson. It's taught me a lesson in compassion. Seeing all of these cells and all these things that we're made up of has, you know, made me more compassionate for myself and for others. Because it makes me realize that there's so much going on inside each of us. There's all these little cells working so hard for everything we think and feel and do and say to one another without us even realizing that they're doing it. And I'm not saying you need to pay attention to every cell and every protein in your body all the time. No, that'd be ridiculous. But we do need to remember this beauty in our biology, the beauty in the biology of every living thing. Because so often we reduce one another to one thing. We reduce someone to a stereotype an object, their race, their gender, what they say, some manufactured problem that they have, they need to buy an expensive cream to solve. We reduce people to one thing so often, and we're not one thing. We're many trillions of things. Don't forget about the blobs. Don't forget about the beauty of the blobs. Trip out about how cool it is that you're made of blobs. And so next time, you're looking at someone else, or you're looking at yourself, you're washing your face, in the mirror. Forget everything else you've been told. And just remember, you are, at least according to science, you are a magnificent molecular masterpiece. Thank you. <laughs>